الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of the methodology of the Salaf al and the Ummah's need for it. Shaykh Salim ibn Fazan said, the Prophet Sallallahu warned against those deviant callers, meaning those people who are calling to the path of Jahannam, those people who divide the Ummah, those who, people who divide the Salafis, those people who divide, uh, divide the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, calling to other than the Book of Allah, the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the path of the Salaf al they want to lead the people astray and divert them from the way of the Salaf. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that they are devils at the gates of the hellfire, and whoever obeys them will enter the fire. This is a major warning against them, especially as time goes on and Islam becomes stranger. The trials and calamities increase, and thus the Muslims are in dire need of the way of the Salaf. Sheikh Salim al Fazan is pointing out here that we are in need of rectification as a ummah and that rectification only comes through the way of the salaf because the way of the salaf is the way of the quran it's the way of the sunnah and it's the way of the sahaba from amongst those deviants are those who say everyone is muslim yes but upon which path so imam fuzan here is questioning to say that everyone's on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, everyone, no Muslim is on misguidance. No, we can't say that. He says, from amongst those deviants are those who say everyone is Muslim. Yes, but upon which path? If the Muslims were upon the path of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this would be acceptable. But them, merely having Muslim names, while they are upon a devious path, or deviant path, or devious path, they are upon the path of so-and-so and so-and-so -so deviants. Then indeed, the Muslims are traversing a path which will lead them to the hellfire. This indicates that the affair is not merely ascribing to Islam. As we mentioned, a person's ascribing to Islam cannot be valid unless he obtains beneficial knowledge and unless he focuses on learning the way of the Salaf. For this reason, you find that the scholars focus on Aqidah and its various uh, chapters, branches, and issues. They authored extensive works in Aqidah and summarized works for the purpose of educating people about the way of the Salaf, focusing on it and the importance of adhering to it and being steadfast upon it. Consequently, this issue is in dire need of focus and concentration, especially due to the fact that the deviation and darkness has become widespread. The Muslim is in dire need of light that will guide them through the darkness, deviation, and ignorance. Today you have many individuals who are self-taught and claim to have knowledge and understanding. These individuals have not gained knowledge from its proper source and foundation. Instead, they have gained knowledge from individuals who are similar to them, from books or from culture, as they say. This manner of gaining knowledge does not lead to good, nor does it lead to the correct path. It is incumbent upon the individual to accurately learn the way of the Salaf in order to adhere and abide by it. It is mandatory that you display patience upon that which befalls you while traversing this path from blame, belittlement, and other than these. You, pres you presently hear abuse and criticism against those who adhere to the methodology of the Salaf. People mention that the person who adheres to this way is old-fashioned and behind times. Do not be swayed away from the truth by such mockery and falsehood. Hold steadfast to the safe methodology because it is the path of salvation. Because of this, the Prophet ﷺ said, عَلَيْكَ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِي خُلُفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِ تَمَسِّكُوا بِهَا وَعَذُوا وَعَذُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِذِ It is upon you to adhere to my sunnah and the sunnah of my rightly guided uh, khulafa, the khalifat, after me. Hold fast to it with your molar teeth. Your molar teeth are in the back of your mouth. When you, that means fully biting and clinging on to something. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, For verily, those who live after me will witness many differences. So it is upon you to adhere to my sunnah. So that right there is medicine for our problems. And that is medicine for our differences. Because people are still going to blame with you, blame, consider you blameworthy. They're still going to attack you. But if you have enough knowledge to make sure that you're striving 
to be on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the madhab of the salaf, then you're in khair kathir. You're in khair kathir. Then he said, when the difference appear, differences appear, nothing will save a person except obedience to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnah of his rightly guided khulafa. This is the way to salvation. This is a safe path, the path to paradise. Therefore, we must focus on this methodology and no one should be diverted from it by way of those who belittle it and describe it with debasing attributes. These people not only abuse this methodology within themselves, they also seek to disparage it amongst others. This is because they have waged war against this way. They do this because this is the true path and they want deviation. Therefore, be aware of them, O slave of Allah. Do not suffice yourself with merely ascribing to this methodology. Do not suffice yourself with becoming self-taught. A self-taught individual to accurately learn the way of the Salaf in order to adhere and abide by it. It is mandatory that you display patience upon that which befalls you while traversing this path, belittlement, and, then, and other than these. You presently hear abuse and criticism. So here, uh, a very important thing we need to highlight that Sheikh is mentioning here is he said, he mentioned about self being self-taught and the danger of being self-taught. And so I want to talk a little bit about that because you do have some students that are students of knowledge and some individuals, imams and different things who have never went to study. And it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily go to study. But maybe they've never really had a chance to sit with ulama. And they're in positions of dawah, positions of being imams. And hopefully they're presenting good. But what is discouraged about this, pay, pay, about this path and about any, for all students of knowledge and even scholars, is to know, have an idea about your level. Because if you don't have any idea about what you can speak about and what you do not have the knowledge to speak about, it opens up a lot of dangers and it opens you up to many mistakes and being misguided and misguiding others. For example, if someone hasn't studied with the scholars and they've only read translated books, for example, or even if they have Arabic and they've read some of the sources, but their whole, the way they formed their whole minhaj and everything was just from those books and listening to lectures they will have benefit, but it's not the same as what you gain from the scholars. But the benefit now is you have a lot of things you gain from the scholars are, is recorded. But the Salaf used to say, which means, men kitabuhu Whoever's book is his scholar, then he is misguided. Me, so the scholars today use that to mean that, for example, the one who just learns from books, just from reading, and then they're making fat fatwa and they're talking about issues they shouldn't talk about because they didn't get the tarbiya and didn't get to sit under those beards and really get steeped in knowledge or those khimar for the sisters sitting under uh, scholarly women the point is is to have that isnad of taken from the scholars and there are so many benefits in manners there's so many benefits in how to answer questions there's so many benefits in in knowledge and hikmah that you will not gain from just reading books just reading books, you might have an issue that is that you're khalal. You didn't have a chance to ask questions about. You just take a particular understanding and you stay upon that. It can be very dangerous. You also find individuals who don't know which books to teach, don't know which books to study. And so then they cut and paste from here and there and it, they spread uh, either dangerous ideologies because when you sit with scholars, that helps you. It's like steeping in tea that you become more mature in knowledge and gain more fiqh and more understanding. Whereas the person who doesn't have that benefit, 
then perhaps they just read the text and then they try to apply it to the best of their ability and they're more prone to mistakes. Another point I want to mention as I mentioned as I was alluding to or, or uh, saying is that knowing our levels that we should have an idea those things I try just as a person example to teach only those things which I've studied which I have experienced and I studied I, I usually don't go to books I'm not going to teach something unless it's something I've studied or studied something from it and I've gained knowledge about that subject from other books that I've studied and other durus and other lectures and so forth or prepared from and I also prefer teaching things that are hopefully translated into English so it saves me from having to spend more time in translating even though I like to use Arabic because that keeps me uh, on point in my Arabic it keeps me from losing the little bit that I have so I practice it by sometimes speaking some Arabic sometimes uh, reading some things in Arabic and translating so this helps me in my uh, continuous seeking of knowledge and conveying that knowledge so the point is is you have to know your level if you're starting to make fatwa and you're just a, a small student of knowledge or whatever the case may be uh, I might offer advice but I don't give fatwa okay that's far from my level and where I should be but what I do do is if it's something I don't know then I will go to one of the mashayikh and after that's why you find translated things from me uh, some questions from like our Sheikh Sheikh Saeed bin Halal half of the law ta'ala the point is is to know your level sometimes people they make a uh, fatwa which has been some mistakes that some brothers made in the past that are in positions of dawah they cause divorces between marriages they were making fatwa uh, about people's marriages they were making mistakes these are horrible mistakes that they will pay for on the day of judgment because they shouldn't have been doing that they didn't have the knowledge and the fiqh to do so and the right to do so and they cause families to split. So this is why it's important to be humble with regards to knowledge. Humble yourself. I've heard how many, one of the biggest principles, and this is something you won't find in the books a lot of times, uh, that I, one of the biggest lessons I've learned from many, especially major scholars, I've heard this. I've heard some small scholars, they might answer questions about things that are bigger mess mes than them, maybe. But what I found from major scholars, especially like imams like uh, Imam uh, 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 Imam uh, Abdul Masan Al Abad, Imam Fozan, and others, is that I've heard them been uh, being asked questions, and they just say Allahu Akbar, even something that I thought I knew the answer, and so those are lessons in tarbiya that that is a type of educate that has an educating effect to let us know to be humble with regards to knowledge because we can't answer everything and if you know your level you can safeguard yourself from the fire safeguarding your tongue and safeguard yourself from being a source of misguidance for others and we'll end the treaties here as I don't have the final page, but the final page I think is mainly du'a and the general benefits of the treaties. We've went over it, walillah alhamd. And we hope that this is a benefit and a clarity about something, about the madhab of the salaf and what it means to call yourself salafi. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyibu, amal al-mutaqabil and bless us with ikhlas, with abad and forgive us of our many, many sins. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruka lima al'alamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam